Start the mission statement. Go ahead. Our mission, Helping Parents Heal, is a nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting bereaved parents. Through support and resources offered, we aspire to help individuals become shining light parents, meaning a shift from a state of emotional heaviness to one of hopefulness and greater peace of mind. HPH goes a step beyond other groups by allowing the open discussion of spiritual experiences and afterlife evidence in a non-dogmatic way. HPH affiliate groups welcome everyone, regardless of religious or non-religious background, and encourage open dialogue. Attendance at all HPH meetings is voluntary. All discussions that take place at affiliate-led meetings are confidential. We hope that participants will learn from and share with each other. Zoom meetings run by HPH leadership are not confidential. These meetings typically feature guest presenters and are posted on YouTube so that affiliate members worldwide can watch and benefit. Neither type of HPH meeting is designed to replace traditional therapy or spiritual counseling. Helping Parents Heal offers a wide variety of speakers, allowing parents to learn about many possible ways to heal. This includes presenters covering progressive topics, such as afterlife evidence and connecting with children who have passed. The views expressed by our guest speakers may or may not reflect the, opinion, the opinions of Helping Parents Heal leaders and members. So we ask that you take from the presentations whatever may benefit you personally. Welcome everyone. Welcome um, Farah and thank you, Carol. This is just wonderful to have you here. And I just wanna say that uh, for the people who are in here, that this is probably one of the biggest groups that we've ever had. And Farah is definitely one of our most beloved providers. And Farah- no with, she's been with, well, no pressure, I'm sorry, but she's been with us for almost as long as Helping Parents Heal has existed. And I found out about her very early on from someone who was related to the group. And I called her and spoke to her for about a half an hour on the phone. Um, she's just amazing. And she's done um, live readings for Helping Parents Heal in our Phoenix group. And um, I just wanted to read a short bio so that you understand a little bit about her. I know that it's a little old. She was telling me that I need to get an updated bio, but I'd like oh, yeah, you to understand yeah, uh, a little bit about her abilities. Um, Farrah Gibson was born with an amazing ability given to her by God. She has the ability to connect people here in the physical world with their loved ones who have passed on to heaven. The gift lies in the messages that she gets from the loved ones. When Pharaoh was a little girl, she always knew that she was a little different from the other kids. She could see things that other kids couldn't see, hear things that other kids couldn't hear, and feel things that she couldn't explain. In her teens, Pharaoh discovered that it wasn't that she was different. She was blessed. Claire, uh, Pharaoh is clairaudient. She hears spirit clairsentient, she feels spirit, and she is also clairvoyant. She sees spirit and the symbols that they give her. Vera has shared messages of healing and assurance that our loved ones are with us and watching over us from heaven since she was a young girl. She also offers life coaching and spiritual guidance, as well as readings with messages from loved ones. And you can learn more about her at her website, www.farragibson.com, which is under construction today. So just in case you go there, please don't try to get a reading with her immediately. She is booked out till 2023. But uh, please join me in welcoming the beautiful Farah Gibson. Welcome, Farah. Hi, thank you so much. And I do need to ask you, Elizabeth, there's a little thing in front of me that tells me how many people are entering the room. Can we get that out of my vision or how do I get that out of my vision? I'm going to get that out. I'm going to make it so that you're no longer a co-host. So maybe that would help. That. Um, well, I don't know if I'm allowed to do that anymore. Um, okay. Yeah, that is confusing because there are people coming there. in all the I got it. No, no, it's whatever you just did that. Fixed it, girl. I got it. We're good. Okay. 
<laughs> Welcome, Farah. <laughs> All right, perfect. Hi, everybody. Um, and then it's actually now it's doing it again. It's asking me to admit people into the room. So I don't know. Let me see if I can do this someplace else. If I can take you off. Withdraw. There we go. Got it. Okay. It should Maybe. stop. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's still doing it. So basically, it has a big thing in front of everybody's face, like a big window in front of everybody's face on my screen. You know why? It's just because there are so many people coming into I love this. it. Okay. Oh, huh? I don't think. Okay. I just admitted somebody to the room. So, okay. Well, let's just start you guys. And we'll just go from there. I'll just ignore the fact that I can't see anybody. <laughs> we'll go from there. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Farrah Gibson, psychic medium. And um, some of you have heard from me and some of you are, and some of you haven't, and that's okay. And I'm here for you guys tonight. And I felt it was going to be more beneficial to everyone if what I did today wasn't so much making connections for you, but really trying to answer general questions for everybody, because I do feel like the more that we know, the less we fear um, when it comes to having loved ones in heaven and especially children um what i wanted to do first is an exercise with you you with you and your kids so i want everyone to take a big deep breath in and blow it out i have something in my lap it's an item I'm not trying to trick you um, I have an item that I want you to challenge your children to give you details about. And I hold it in my hand, but it's a little bigger than my hand. So I don't want to hold it up into my hand for you. So it's sitting in my lap. I want you to challenge your children in your mind through your thoughts, because your thoughts are your soul speaking. And your soul has an unbreakable bond with your children. Nobody can break it. And, um, and this is just a practice. So if we don't get everything right, that's okay. It doesn't mean the bond isn't there. You just tell your damn kids to get to work a little harder next time. And, and I like it and, and just challenge them to keep working with you. But I want you to challenge them to a color. Is there a color that comes to your mind? Is there a shape that comes to your mind? Is it an, is it a person? Is it a thing? Is it an item? Is it an animal? I want you to pay attention to the things that come to your mind is there a shape that you get? Is there a detail about the item in my, it's in my hands, um, that you can have your children bring forward to you? Pay attention to the first thing that comes in your head, not the second or the third. Don't second guess yourself. Self-doubt is so common. That's okay. That's a human thing. Um, and I'm going to give you guys a few moments to just think of it because your thoughts are your soul speaking to your children. Listen to what your kids are saying back to you. And then I'm gonna show you the item. It's just a little Frenchie ball, fluffy little thing, got a little ring up top. So if you saw something round, if we saw something soft, maybe even a greenish or a bluish color. Um, I just saw somebody put up yellow paper clip and I would say that this is golden and would absolutely pass for something that looks like a paper clip. Some of you are going to get it right. There's no wrong answer, I promise. Okay. It's just the first time that we're doing this with us. Um, and I just wanted, and there's a Frenchie on it. So if you did get an animal, um, there is a little French bulldog on it. In fact, one of my clients gave me this as a gift. <laughs> um, if you didn't get it right, it's okay, guys. It's just the first time. Take your time. I always tell my clients when I talk to them, challenge your kids to the t-shirt game. And what I mean by that is work with your kids daily. And when you are going to see somebody that's outside of your home or maybe within your home, but you just haven't seen them yet that day, challenge your kids to tell you what color t-shirt they're going to be wearing. Um, it's a game that you can play silently with your kids and not feel awkward or odd asking somebody to validate it for you because it's something that you can validate yourself with your kid. But yes. So what I had was just, it's a little soft, squishy, like, so if you saw a stuffed animal, that could be the same thing as well. There is white on the back as well. So honestly, if there's something with this that you would have seen in your mind or thought in your mind, just to show you the details. And like I said, there is a little round clasp on it as well, just in case that's something that you would have seen, because they may not always give you every detail, but um, I think that you guys are doing great because I've seen some of these answers pop up. Go ahead, Elizabeth, sorry. 
I was just going to ask if there's a bell on it. Someone was there. There's so many great answers. Obviously. Yeah, so there is a ringing noise to it. It does actually ring. Can you hear that? So it almost rings like a bell. So yes, if you got a sound like, um, yes. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's funny because it leaves room for interpretation. It's just like when I'm connecting for you guys, right? I know what I'm seeing in my head, but I don't know what it means for you. And I wanted you guys to blindly do basically what I do with your kids. And that is see what pops into my head. And then I say it right. And you guys are like at even fuzzy red ball, even though the color is not the same. Um, it doesn't matter, right? You've got the fuzzy ball. <laughs> so I love it actually. Um, and, and again, if it didn't happen the first time for you, work on them with the t-shirt game, like work with them on the t-shirt game, because it's just something fun. Yeah. That's beautiful. There's a question here from Angelina. That's actually a question I had. She says, does my son know I'm talking to him without speaking? Yes. So I love, love, love that question. Your thoughts are your soul's voice speaking. Okay. And, and let me just put this into a different perspective for you. I'm going to give the car analogy because it's my favorite analogy to put this in perspective. This is my car. Everybody has their own car. My body is my car. You have your car. You have your car. Everybody has their car. Okay. My spirit from the moment that I'm conceived, actually long before I was conceived, but from the moment I conceived is the driver of this car. I have a driver within me. Okay. My spirit is within this car. Your thoughts are your spirit voice. Okay. And this vocal cord crap that we have in human form, that's our human voice. Very different voices, two very different voices. Spirit can hear all of them, but they can absolutely hear your thoughts to them because that is your soul speaking. It is the same voice that you've used for all eternity with heaven long before you ever came here. So spirit driver drives this car around in life for as long as we can, for whatever reason, whether it's cancer or tragedy or, you know, blank, whatever it is, um, when the car simply won't go any further in this world, driver steps out of the car, fully intact, never ever hurt or um, any negative negativity that ever touches that driver, only growth. And the car, when the car breaks down, we simply step out of the car. Now I got the car in my hand. You can bury the car, you can cremate the car, you can do whatever you want with that car. Damn old thing doesn't even run anymore, don't even need it. And that driver is still very much intact at your side, skipping at your side in life, going, go, go, mom, go, go, dad, go, right? I'm so proud of you. You're still doing it and you can't disappoint them. But yes, they hear you. They hear your thoughts. Um, they hear your vo voice. They see anything that you've written to them. I have them bring up a lot of times that, you know, we wrote a note and placed it with me or, you know, that you sent notes up on balloons and I got every word. And, and some of those things are things that come through during validation. So yeah, they they're very capable. They're, they're, in, they're not incapable. They're not unincapable of anything. I should, I should say. <laughs> well, I just want to say that, um, I would love for you to describe how you get the messages from our kids. Um, I know that you're, I mean, you have three sentience, which is pretty amazing. There are, are not very many mediums that I know of that have all of those together, but could you tell a little bit about the signs that you get that show you what they want to um, give as messages? Because I would love to. So as I begin to connect with a loved one, because it's not always just kids, right? Sometimes I connect with a parent or, or a spouse or whatever it is. So the first thing that I do is I pay attention to my feel. And my feel is male or female first, typically, right? Am I male? Am I female in life by birth? And, you know, and then also I want to know if I'm younger to the side or above. So above is going to be an older male or female, like a parent or grandparent. To the side is going to be in your same age generation, sister, wife, friend, cousin, husband, cousin, you know, depending on male or female, but in that same age generation as you below for me places them in the childhood when they when they make me feel like I'm below this person that you're speaking to it makes me feel like they're a child so then I ask them to start walking me through their passing it's one of the first things that I go through I feel like it's the best first moment with them because it's the moment where we hold all of our pain and I like to walk through those moments every millisecond of them really to release those moments maybe answer some questions about it so they walk me through their passing 
as if I'm remembering it is the best way to describe how I get it. So I feel like, you know, I was in a vehicle and I'm in the passenger seat of that vehicle, not the driver's seat, or maybe I'll feel like I'm in the driver's seat of that vehicle. And, you know, or maybe I'm in the passenger seat and I know better because damn it, my mom told me to always wear my seatbelt and I didn't. And, you know, we rolled and I'm ejected, or maybe I'm feeling like I had been clean off of heroin for six months. And I feel like I just had one week moment where I took you know, a drug that, that couldn't be trusted and it took me to heaven, you know, but I'll walk through those mo moments. They typically walk through where they were, who found them, you know, if they were trying to save them, you know, if they were transported to the hospital, those type of moments. And I think that those are important again to walk through, but I literally walk through it, you guys, like a memory. I get indications on my body as well. So um, if I did have cancer in life, I may feel as though it's in my pancreas. Um, I may feel as though I had breast cancer and we only actually removed my left breast, but my right one's still intact. You know, they'll give me details on my body to make me feel like I'm going through those moments. I spent a lot of time in the ER when I was younger before I realized what the heck it was <laughs> because I would get passing indications on my body. And so if you feel like you took a you know, like a head impact or you, you were having a heart attack or whatever it was, you know, I was like, what is wrong with me? And I'm really not a big sissy lala. So I didn't understand it, but now I do. So <laughs> That's amazing. And, and so I just wanted to tell you too, I mean, being able to hear um, that everything is okay during those last moments is probably one of the most healing things for us as parents. So Basically, when these kids come through, what they're telling you is that even though these things happened, it didn't affect them in any way. Is that they're right? They're so perfect. If you guys can take the most perfect you could ever imagine your children and you multiply that perfection by infinity, it's them. that They are so amazingly perfect. And this is now, as tragic as it is on our side of the fence, this is their cool story to tell about how they got to heaven. Now you just picture them setting all the people down, the, the old, you know, the other people down in heaven and say, guess how I got here. And this is their story out of pure perfection. They're giving it. And I want to give this as an example, because this, this moment that I had in life is, is really one that describes things well to put things in perspective for parents too. I had this friend named these boys named Kayla and Brian that lived around the corner from us when we were growing up. And, um, Kayla and Brian's dad passed from a lung disease when they were young. They were in their teenage years. It was pivotal for them. It was really tough, you know? And um, I, I was friends with them literally since I was two. And that was a house that you hung out at. They had fire pits. Their parents didn't care what we did. We kind of all hung out there, you know, the cool place to be. And Kayla would talk when we were kids about how someday he was going to have this cabin and it was going to overlook this majestic view. And it was going to be so breathtaking and have this amazing back porch, you know, or patio. And, and he was like, there's going to be hot chicks and a hot tub in my, in my cabin in bikinis. And I was like, wow, okay. Oh, that's ambitious. And, you know, and when Kayla was in his forties, he ended up getting the same lung disease that his dad had and he passed. And I will never forget the most amazing dream visit I had with Kayla after he passed. And in my dream, I walked up to this door and it was this massive cabin, this huge door. And I knocked on the door and opened the door and it's Kale. He looked so amazing because in life he had actually begun to look, begun to look like a cancer patient, like had lost quite a bit of weight and, and body definition. And, and he was in a wheelchair and, you know, and Kale looked so amazing. And I'm like, oh my God, Kale, you're beautiful. And he's like, come on, Farah, I got to show you the view. And I'm like, Kale, this place is amazing. And I'm walking through this most amazing cabin with him. And he's like, come on, Sarah, I got to show you the view. And he's like one step ahead of me. And I just want to kind of look at the things. And son of a gun, if I don't look to the right, and there's a damn hot tub with hot chicks and bikinis. And I said, Kale, there's hot chicks and bikinis in your, and he's like, I know, but come on, I got to show you the view. We get back to the back patio. And it is the most majestic view you could ever imagine describing. I can't, there's colors and trees and things that I could never even tell you what they look like. And I lost my breath and I said, oh, Kao, this is like the place that you talked about when we were kids. And he said, Pharaoh, what I didn't realize is I had this home all along. It's the home I came from in heaven. It really put things in perspective for me. This body, this car, 
we existed in heaven before we had it. We have a home there that we return to. All those beautiful things that we dream of in life, we have them. Just to put that in perspective. Yes. That's <laughs> so beautiful. And it, you're giving me goosebumps <laughs> the whole time that you're talking. I think you're doing the same thing for everyone. Um, Sandra is asking if we have a soul contract that says, for instance, we will become paralyzed in this life. Could it happen if we skydived or tripped on a sidewalk? In other words, might we choose to do the riskier events as it will either happen anyways or won't? Um, Correct. So it will. And, and especially, you know, I know that a parent uh, so many times will feel responsible for a moment that their child had, like they want to, you know, hold on to that moment and go, well, I'm the one who let them get in the car that day, or I'm the one who blah, whatever it is, right? I know that we have a lot of different passings here, you guys. So I know I'm not going to touch on all of them, but I will say this, you're not bigger than their blueprint. Exactly. And what I mean by that is, this is my plant blueprint that I have for my soul's growth and my soul's journey. And within my blueprint, I have written obstacles for myself and to grow others in those moments. But I can tell you that my graduation day, when my soul reaches its growth, is not ever, ever going to be changed by anybody else because they're not bigger than my blueprint. And you're not bigger than your child's blueprint. You couldn't have changed that moment not with all of the love in the world and all of the compassion. And if you had been there in that moment, I can tell you that there's nothing in this universe you could have done differently. I promise. Um, but when it comes to um, writing tragedies into our life, I and mean, we write tragedies, you guys, if life is meant to be perfect, we would have stayed in heaven. So the people that write the most tragedy in their life are the strongest spirits I know, just so you know, like pat yourself on the back, holy crap. The strongest spirits write the most difficult journeys. And so Again, we're writing this in perfection of heaven, right? So as you're writing this, you're sitting in the perfection and light and beauty of heaven going, I think I'll go ahead and do this in my life. Somebody's walking behind you going, that one's a bitch. Don't do that one. I've done it. You're like, oh, shut up. It's my blueprint. I've got this. Little do you know, holy crap, maybe we should have listened, right? Game on. Here we are. This sucks. That's the human side of it. On a spiritual note, you guys, you are growing so much more than you ever could have grown without these tragedies. You're growing in love and in strength more than you ever would have been blessed with in this universe without these moments. And you will return to that perfection in heaven in the place that you existed with your children beforehand. So, um, yeah. And can I add one thing? And that yes. is, it will be as though not one second has passed when you get to your kids. Yeah, so absolutely. So there is no sense of time in heaven, none whatsoever. Um, we don't have to have wear watches in heaven. In fact, I put this damn thing on for this, sorry. Um, but I, otherwise I don't even wear one on, on earth if I don't have to. Um, but they literally have nothing but a blink of an eye before you get to them. So it's not, and, and I will say this, your children don't miss you in heaven. Right. as difficult as that is to hear, um, because missing you would be a negative emotion. And what kind of heaven is heaven if we're sitting around missing everybody for all eternity? Instead of missing you, they love you. Instead of, you know, and people go, well, wait, are they proud of me? Or, you know, are they seeing the thing, the horrible things that I'm doing, or maybe that I'm crying all day and blah, blah, blah. They see that as growth. You guys are still living. That is not easy to do. They know better. They did it as well. Right. And so, um, they're so amazingly beautiful that they got to graduate before you. Um, so there's that. <laughs> Everything that they had to, and they have graduated. But it is true that I've heard that Earth School is the hardest school in the universe. So this is this is not easy. And yes. I love that old car image of our bodies that you just leave it behind and then you don't have to deal with it anymore, which is just so no. Nope. And um, Jackie has a question. I don't know how to ask for validations. I have asked my daughter, but I guess that I am not understanding them. Could you talk a little bit about validations and how to ask yes. kids for them? Um, I say, <laughs> you be careful what you wish for. Um, I, I say that um, ask for whatever it is that you want to ask for, but leave it within a means that it's possible, right? If I ask them to move the cup on the table in front of me, it's probably not going to happen. They do try not to freak us out, so to speak, right? But um, whether it's birds, butterflies, dragonflies, coins, electronics, whatever it is, let me just say it this way. You may be looking for something specific, but when your child is popping into your head in the middle of the day for no reason, you're hearing your child. 
So when you see a cool feather on the ground and you go, wow, that's kind of a cool feather. It's just a cool feather in that moment. And it's a feather and you may pick the feather up and think nothing of it. Or I see a feather on the ground and it makes me think emphatically of my son. Why? Because the feather on the ground, when you're seeing that and your son's pop or daughter is, is popping into your head in that moment, um, that's you hearing them going, hey, mom, that's from me or dad. Sorry. And I'm trying to I'm trying to play both sides of the, all, the, all the sides of the fence here, you guys. OK, um, but I want you to understand that when they're popping in your head in the moment that you see a colorful bird or a whatever, you know, do know that that's you hearing them. Um, I challenged God for a uh, validation one time and I. <laughs> I was kind of being a jokester with it and boy, did he answer. So I, I will tell you, yeah, they'll, they'll answer you sometimes immediately. And sometimes it needs a little time, but you guys need to understand something too. Grief is made of love. You can't apologize for it. You can't get through it. You can't just get over it instantly. Don't let anybody tell you to, okay? So if you're not seeing the signs right away or not getting the dreams right away, I know a lot of people are defeated by not getting dreams as often as they want, or maybe they're going to others and others are getting dreams and not me kind of thing. I will tell you that is your children's way of still getting to you. If they're going to somebody else in dreams and that person is telling you about those experiences with your children that is your children's way for now while you're in this grieving mode for them to get to you through somebody else that they could get to a little bit easier okay so or if somebody else says i got a sign from your son or daughter and then you didn't but they told you about it again that's their way of getting to you in these moments that maybe your grief has these blocks around you made of love they're like cinder blocks right but they block your view and so until those blocks are down just a little bit and it's going to take time you miss your kids. You love your kids. Those blocks are made of missing and loving. And we can't apologize for those blocks. So if they're getting to you in other ways, embrace that. And listen to me. Don't say things like, I don't get signs from my kids. I can't feel them. I don't see them in dream. The don't, can't, or I'm not is something we're going to throw out the window today. The last time we say it. I look forward to seeing my child in my dreams in their perfect timing. I look forward to seeing their signs in their perfect timing. Change it to that. See that I'm leaving it open versus focusing on I don't or I can't. Because if I'm giving my energy to don't and can't, it's what I'm feeding. Um, so I just say, you're not doing it wrong. You're not. That's pain that those words are made of, but we're just tossing those words out the window and we're going to make them I look forward to. Still saying the same thing, leaving it open if that makes sense. Yeah, it's exactly right. And one of the things that I think is really important too, is that every time we do get a sign from them, we thank them because then they know that they're, that they are communicating and they're able mm -hmm. to get through to us. So that's a beautiful way of explaining it. Elena is saying, I have a question. Last night, my son visited me in a dream. During this dream, I knew exactly what happened. I knew he transitioned and I knew it, it was a visit. So I was holding him in my arms all night, not letting him go. Oh. It went really for a long time. Am I harming him by doing that, keeping him um, with me for such a long time? No, you can never hold them back from heaven. Um, they can be in more than one place at a time. So as he's giving you that moment, he's also probably partying his butt off in heaven, hanging out with friends and, and family as well. So I can tell you that you just enjoy those moments. You're not, you're not holding, don't ever let anybody tell you that you're holding your child back for any reason whatsoever in this universe. Just that, let me blanket statement that. So um, they're not unreachable. Like if somebody ever tells you that your children are unreachable in a reading or something, that is BS. They want nothing more than for you to know that they are lovingly at your side and they can absolutely be reached at all times and even by you. So yes, if you're getting an entire evening, um, I, I think every parent, that's their dream at this point when they, you know, do have a child in heaven. So you just got one of those ultimate experiences and that's awesome. Um, that's perfect. That's exactly right. Could you tell us, because I know that you will explain this to everyone so well, uh, Julie is asking what your thoughts are on passing by suicide. Could you tell okay. me about that? Yes, I can. So, um, and, and I know that everybody has different views on, on passing by suicide, but again, I'm, I'm going to say this. I, I do believe in God, first of all, okay? And I, and I don't want to challenge your faith or beliefs if you don't. You do you, whatever it is that, you, that is important to you is important to me. Um, and I do believe that he gives us free will to write our blueprint in life. 
And within that blueprint, we write the growth that we intend for ourselves. We write this journey, we write this family to spend this time with and, and all of these moments that we're going to grow from and grow others from. Suicide is one of those things that everybody goes <gasps> when they hear that that's the cause of a passing. Why? Well, there's a lot of religious beliefs that believe that, you know, different different aspects of things will happen to somebody if they do. And, 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 and again, I don't want to challenge anyone's faith or beliefs, but I feel like everybody goes to heaven. Everybody goes to heaven. And within that blueprint, in that growth pattern, the reason for me suicide feels, and this, I know, Elizabeth, we've talked about this, and we may differ on this just a little bit, okay? I feel like we have our exits that we've written in, in our journey. Suicide for me is not one that we wrote in that moment. And the reason that I say that is because it, it's our life journey and it's our life path. And it's really not one that we typically take ourselves out of because it's our growth that we intended. But there's no regret. In the moment that we get back to heaven, let's say we left here and we still had this much growth that we intended. The reason that a family member feels like they're floundering so much when somebody takes their life is because that life that they still intended to live in between there was one that they were also still going to be growing you. Um, and in that growth that we're not sharing with them in the physical world in those moments, for me, that's why we feel so empty in those moments and that we struggle so much, but they return to pure perfection. They realize in those moments um, that they were intended to finish those moments, but in that sense, they're not made to go back. Um, I do believe in multiple lives, and I do believe that they're able to go back if they want to do another life the same, but it takes about 100 years or more in our lifetime to plan one of those things, and they will wait for you and be there for you for it, but nobody punishes them. It's their blueprint. That is their blueprint. They're in pure perfection, just like everyone else in heaven. And, and you guys, here's the thing. I mean, there's a lot of different things that are called suicide that for me are not considered taking the easy way out either. Um, I, I just did a reading yesterday um, for a mom whose child was literally just doing a um, TikTok challenge. And it didn't work out so well. It wasn't suicide, but somebody would consider it as such. Or, you know, I mean, you guys, there, there's a lot of different things, you know, aspects within that, whether it's mental, you know, um, struggles and, and medications that they started that really actually did bring that decision about, or, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's a fine line of intentional or written, if that makes sense, kind of. <laughs> Listen, that was beautiful. And I, I just think that everything that you say is so healing. So thank you for telling us that because we have probably um, half of the questions in the, in the chat box about suicide. So that's wonderful that you gave us that information. Um, Bonnie is saying, Farah, will you just come live with me? I need your optimistic, energetic soul. <laughs> yes. So do you mind? It's Margarita. <laughs> I just want to say before I read any of the other questions that um, Farah is probably one of the most amazing people that I've seen giving readings live. Um, and for those of you who are at the conference, you're going to just love this. But also for those of you who aren't, you'll be able to live stream it. Um, she takes her shoes off. She will not take yes for an answer if she doesn't believe that what the information that you're she's giving you has been validated in the way that she wants it to be validated she will keep on saying nope I don't like that answer you're gonna have to find something better than that and it's so fun to watch her because um I, I can feel the kids there when she's there, which I can with with other mediums as well but she is just so certain of what she wants to get from, from you as a sitter and to make sure that you are getting the information that your child is giving um, in the way that they want you to receive it, which is just beautiful. So anyway, I, um, so I, as I say, we, we have lots of people who would love for you to move in with them. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, I have a Zoom user who doesn't have a name, unfortunately, but who's saying, I feel so lost and I don't understand my life. My health is worse uh, than ever 
Um, what can I do to feel better here on earth? Could you maybe just give a few tips to all of us as parents to know about how to move forward? I, I'd say first thing is gratitude, right? I am. Um, but you know, I, I think that it's creating a new relationship with your children. So here's the thing. We are always focused on the human experience, right? It's what we're here for. We're here in this human experience in the, hold on, I got to get a drink. Sorry. Um, so we always think in very human terms. And I always take a step back and say, take a step back to spirit. What am I learning from? What am I growing from this? So people who write illness into their path, I can tell you right now that, I mean, literally everybody's blueprint is written long before they ever came here by them. So when you look in the mirror and you go, my life is incorrect right now. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I don't know what I should do with my life. The answer to that is you're exactly where you're meant to be. And life isn't meant to be easy. And how amazing are you to write such a difficult journey? So not only did you lose a child in the physical sense, but on top of that, you also have physical ailments like, holy crap, high five, well done honestly, on the spiritual sense, on the human sense, it just sucks. Um, and so I say as, as much as we can when it comes to healing from this journey, create a new relationship with your kids. It's going to be a quiet one. It's not going to be one where we can touch them with our hands like we want to or listen to their laughter in our ears the way that we did in life. But you are going to hear them in your thoughts. You're going to feel them with your soul. Challenge them in moments to feel their touch or to feel them blanket you with their energy, you know? Um, and, and again, Give that time and grace, you guys. It's like the little exercise that we did at the beginning. Maybe not everybody did great at that. That's okay. Grief is in definitely different levels for each and every one of you. And it puts those blocks up. If it's not happening for us right now, that's okay. But your children, if you can start creating a relationship with their soul and recognizing them in your days, when your feet hit the floor in the morning, start saying good morning, son, or good morning, daughter. You know, uh, sorry, I, I don't know all their names, right? But I would just, when your feet just tell them good morning, welcome to my day. Um, instead of worrying about putting flowers at a grave or putting flowers out at the space of an accident or putting flowers, put the flowers on your counter in your kitchen. Tell your child good morning and enjoy those flower blooms every time you see them blooming and, and, and enjoy them with your children in your home. They're with you. They'll go with you. They'll come back with you. So whatever it is that you do, find something to carry with you if you need to, to make sure that you feel like you're carrying them with you get something physical, right? Like I have this little stone that I have here. Like maybe I put that in my pocket every day and it represents me taking my child with me. Whatever it is that you guys need to do to even start pretending that your children are with you, even if, like, if for these parents who don't feel them at all, I want you to start pretending they're there. Use your imagination, just pretend, even if you're faking it. And eventually it's going to feel so. It, you'll get there, I promise. Because you have a better connection with your children than I do. And mine's pretty damn good, I will say. <laughs> so, um, that is yeah. so wonderful. Yes, starting every single day with gratitude and welcoming your child into your day is a beautiful way to start the day. And that's just such a wonderful thing to tell everyone. Um, Jojo is saying, and I guess that maybe this is kind of confusing with what you've been saying, will, uh, will I still get to be Skylar's mom when I get to heaven. So will our relationship still be the same once we get there? All right. Do we really want to know the answer to this question? Yes. All right. Let's do this. Remember I said the spirit driver of this car existed in heaven long before this body. Okay. I'm going to explain this in a different term. I've done some past life regression for myself. I don't do it for anybody else. Don't let anybody feed you bull crap. Do your own. Okay. Um, sorry. Um, but within my multiple lives that I feel like I have lived, I have lived in multiple lives with my husband that I have now, but I have not always lived as a female. I also lived a life with him as a best friend. Um, and I watched as we both got blown off the beaches of Normandy in World War II. Um, and so in that dynamic, am I still spending my lifetimes with my husband? Absolutely. Is he still a soul connection and a soul's mate connection? Absolutely. But do we always share the same dynamic? No. So when we come to this world, some of you may feel so very connected to your children because your children are your soul's mate in this world. 
there's only one, I feel like, um, and they don't always come in the form of a spouse. So maybe we feel extremely connected to that child more than anybody, any other dynamic that we share in this universe, because that child is your soul's mate living in that child's body. We will go back to the same dynamics that we shared in heaven when we planned this life together. So let me just say, you were close enough to them in heaven that you planned to be their parent, um, but you're going to go back to the same amazing connection with them when you get back to heaven that you were before you had this car. Does that make sense? Kind of. Um, so I know it's a little confusing, right? Because we're thinking in the soul, like this, this tunnel vision of human form. But the reality is you're so amazing together in heaven that you picked to be their parent and they picked you to be the, you know, their parents. So um, I would say that you're going to absolutely know your children in heaven the same way you did before you had this body. Beautiful. That's wonderful. Um, Michelle is asking, when a child transitions at a young age, are their souls more advanced in, um, in growth? So I would say that, so, so for me, and again, I don't want to challenge anyone's faith or beliefs. I feel like everybody in heaven is 30 everyone everyone's soul is 30 and i've asked my guides and god why and they say it's just a mature yet young age so i feel like which is kind of a cool thing because then we don't have to worry about little children like oh my gosh who's taking care of them like because again we're thinking a child but we're also talking about this they're a child in this car correct the car is a child but the eternal soul that entered that car um is is so much more eternal and evolved than that car could have ever dreamed of being. So I would say that, yes, when they're coming and they're reaching their soul's growth at a young age, how amazing are they that they're way more beautiful than you and I? Because guess what, folks? We're all still here doing this crap. And there they are. They're done. They're like, Dad, I'm out. Like, oh, I'm going back to heaven. And they're absolutely in pure perfection. Um, I would say that they're much better off. They're much more evolved than you and I in those aspects, or maybe we're still here growing each other and, and still doing our thing. You know, I know that I came here for you guys, <laughs> probably the last time I come for this stuff, but you know, I'm here uh, <laughs> and you're doing yeah. a fabulous job of helping us. And we are so grateful. For no, that. I know. Um, Carrie is saying, um, when I lived on a lake, my my daughter visited me all the time. Now that I've moved away from the lake, it doesn't seem like she visits as often. Did that lake help? And maybe you could talk about water as a way of um, connecting with our kids, possibly. So I I've honestly never used water as a way of connecting. So for me, I will say that I've learned over time because I went through a lot, you guys in life, a lot of muck. And what I realized that no matter where I was and no matter how much muck I was in, my abilities were still there, even if I didn't recognize them. If I was in a place of stress, I was not connecting. If I was in a place, you know, so it really challenged, it, it really challenged me to think that my abilities were gone at times when I was younger, when, you know, I was in an abusive relationship or when I was in a high stress environment or whatever, or like maybe we are moving and this is a new space and it doesn't feel the same as that other space. But I can tell you that her connection is absolutely positively without a doubt, no different in the space that you're in. Just start trusting that. Um, and you'll start feeling her more in that space. We never leave them behind. I don't care how many times you guys have to move. I don't care where you go or who you're with. I can tell you that they never leave your side. Um, and they're not stuck with you by any means. They're still enjoying the, the beauty of heaven, but heaven is three feet off of our floor, you guys, three feet. And it's something I love to teach you guys because I don't want you to think that your kids are unreachable. If you look down at your floor, that's the floor that we walk on three feet above that, three feet about right here because I'm sitting in a chair. This is heaven's floor. They're in this space always. They're always in this space. They see the things that you're doing in life. They, they watch the things that you mess up and they laugh with you. Um, in fact, I, I actually just had a validation the other day of a sister messing up her eyebrows. And I was like, did you mess up your eyebrows? And she was laughing her butt off because she had shaved one off, but it had already grown back. So at least it didn't look like that on, my, <laughs> on the reading. Um, you know, but little things like that, like they don't miss anything. They don't miss anything. They're always there. Yeah. That's exactly right. I just wanted to say that a lot of times when people are having a hard time getting dream visits, it's good to put a glass of water on your be uh, headboard just to be able to help that. But I, I know that you don't need any of that. <laughs> we need some of these things. Sometimes. No, that's cool. Whatever <laughs> tools you guys have to use, you guys, I've just learned over the years that I don't need it. So I'm really not good with as far as like what tools to use because um, my I mean, ability 
or there. I will say that I have a hard time remembering dreams. And I always say like, keep a notebook right next to your bed because you may have an experience with them. Like I might, and I might forget about it if I go pee. So I, I kind of joke and say, we pee out our memories of our dreams. So I say, write everything down before you go potty um, in a notebook really quick and, and or at least jot some notes down and then go potty. That might help you as well. Tell your guides to help you with a more conscious memory of their visits when you wake as well. That may also help. Um, but I work with my guides. If you want to work with water, I love it. If there's tools that you can use, like I love it. Whatever you have to do to feel connected, do it. <laughs> Wonderful. April is saying, does a baby that was in the mom's womb when they transition get to grow in heaven? Um, those babies came for you. Those babies came to grow you with more love and strength again than you ever knew you could carry. No matter how it is that they went back to heaven, whether they miscarried or were born with you know a small amount of life or were born sleeping or whatever it was, I, I can tell you right now that those babies wrote that contract simply to come for growth for you. Um, they they only came for a little while. They will return to that same relationship again that they had with you in heaven long before they ever came into that little body with and for you. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they absolutely will be at your side in heaven as well, for sure. That's beautiful. Jackson is saying, I had a beautiful reading with Farah. It still resonates with me to this day. It Aww. was beautiful and she knew things no one knew. He spoke fast and she kept up with him, LOL, which is true. You are, you are a fast talker. And oh my God. Yeah. You probably get things in that most mediums are not able to just because you do speak so quickly. Well, and I write it all down, you guys. So while I'm taking, while I'm doing your reading, I take notes the entire time. So you don't have to, right? I feel like, okay, we'll be a good team. We'll be a well-oiled machine. Like I'm going to, I'm going to see the things I'm going to write them down. I'm going to tell you what they are. I'm going to write them down. And you're kind of taking them in while I'm writing them down. But sometimes I'm like, damn, they talk a lot. Like I can't keep up. I need a court reporter sometimes for them to just like, <laughs> One of these times I'm going to try typing a reading instead of writing it down because I have really ugly writing fingers now. <laughs> so. Well, um, I, I have a question here asking about your thoughts on pendulums. I would assume that it's probably the same as everything else that we use to communicate that if we, we feel that yeah. that's the thing that helps us, it's I, I think if it resonates with you and it, and it seems to be something that you feel good about, do it. You know what I mean? So as long as you have a good feeling about it and you feel like you're connecting, maybe that's the best way because your intuition is a little challenged right now with grief and maybe a, a pendulum or something is, is a way for you to get answers or to feel closer. Um, keep, keep doing that, I say. But you know, the reality of it is you have an unbreakable bond with your children. I will say it again. You have an unbreakable bond with your children. Your soul connection is stronger than any tool you ever dreamed of using. And so when you start to see and sense them in your days, whether it's some sign that they're leaving around or a feeling that they're there, or, you know, a feeling that they maybe changed this moment for you to make things easier or better or whatever it is, know that they're there. Um, that's beautiful. Now, this is a question that I think a lot of people have. Um, this, this woman is saying, my husband is very religious and I feel like I've been able to connect with my son in meditation. And when I told my husband, he doesn't like to hear it because he believes it's wrong and we aren't supposed to because it is something um, that he's, he's grown up not believing in. Um, do you yeah. have any advice for people who are dealing with with loved ones who are in their lives who are feeling that way? I love that question so much. And here's the answer, you guys. We're not meant to challenge their faith or beliefs. And so as much as you want that spiritual experience for them, their faith and beliefs are really honestly the strongest thing that they need in this moment to deal with their very own grief. And if by what we're adding to their, you know, not like if we're, if we're saying, but my child this or my child that in spiritual form, and that challenges their faith or beliefs, please understand that that faith that they need, that foundation that they had for me is something that they need the most. And if it's something that they want to hold on to, to carry them through, continue to have your spiritual experiences. You're not 
probably going to change their mind, so to speak. Now, not that I haven't done readings for people who have literally not believed in what I do at all. In fact, I just had a born again Christian man sit in with his wife only because she made him. And I was so emphatically proud of him for sitting in because I do know that this was absolutely not something he believed in. And that man was crying the most beautiful, loving tears. And I told him, I said, listen to me, everything that I've said today, I know that you're feeling your child, but I don't want to challenge your faith. And if you need to go back to that, you please do. Right. Um, but here's the thing. I think that there's a beautiful book called the Bible. Beautiful. It's amazing. Um, but I, I feel, and again, this is just me, that the ego of man was written into that book and what better way to lead than to add um, leading by fear and listen to me or else. And I don't think that or else should belong in there. Unfortunately, can we eject it? Nope. It's going to stay there for all eternity. And that's cool. But I choose not to believe it. I actually don't believe in hell. Um, I believe that people are meant in souls contracts to come here and challenge us. One would say like my ex who beat me and spit on me for 17 years and told me how worthless I was would have a special place in hell. But the reality of it is, if I wrote his abuse into my past, I wouldn't be able to relate to people that I was going to help later on if I hadn't gone through those moments. And I wouldn't be the woman that I am today if I hadn't gone through those moments. So I know that someday I'll high five him in heaven and say, thanks for the lessons. Um, re in reality, in life, I don't like the guy at all. Um, <laughs> and I want nothing to do with him. You know, but there are people that have to write to be the counter for our beauty, you know, and to be the challenge in our, they signed up to the, be the, MFers, so to speak, right? They, they, they're the ones who are in our journey. And you probably know who those are in your family, in your friend circle. Um, they're the gift that keeps on giving. Nothing ever changes. I've learned to step back from them. Um, I, I say, you know what? You're always welcome on my positive path, but I won't travel your negative any longer. Um, so yeah, I hope, I hope I answered that question. I don't even know where that was, I was going. That was perfect, Sarah, <laughs> as always. And um, I, I have had a few questions in the box asking about when a child is murdered and we aren't able to solve the murder, does the child really want that to be, uh, to be yes. solved? Is it important to them or is it, uh, could, could you maybe give us some insight? Absolutely. So those are one of those ultimate um, blueprints in life that, that we write, not, not that anyone's better or worse, right? But some, some souls just write a cool, exit point badass to everybody in heaven right like son of a gun man i just went through cancer you did that like yeah that right um or whatever it is it's the camaraderie in heaven is so much lighter um but i will say that they're not sitting in heaven going hey make sure you get that you know if you don't solve this i'm not at peace are you kidding they're more at peace than you could ever imagine they need nothing from you the person who took their life is living within the karmic energy of taking that life Oh boy, that is not an easy life to live either. Um, it's not whether they lived a life in prison after that because they did get caught. Writing that journey is crazy, crazy to wrap our head around. I'm going to put it in this term, okay? Because this is going to be easier than explaining um, for a child and for a murder for a child. The battlefield. You guys do understand what it is for our military to go to war for our country, right? I was at a reading one time, and this is going to put this in perspective for you. I was at a reading one time and I had a group of 10 and this woman's husband was sitting gruffly in his chair the entire time with his arms folded. He did not believe in what I did. And that's fine. I couldn't believe he was sitting in the whole time listening. And he kind of scowled and coughed a little bit every now and then because there wasn't anything he could explain in some of those moments as well. Right. And at the very end, I said, sir, can I come to you? And he said, give it your best shot. And I thought, ooh, game on. He has no idea who I am. So that'll be fun. Um, and I said, I have two Vietnamese soldiers that are coming through. One of them's telling me that you slit his throat from here to here. And the other one tells me you stabbed him twice in the heart. All you had was a knife and you weren't supposed to have to take lives. And he looked at me and tears were falling out of his eyes. And I said, were you loading bombs onto planes? And he goes, how do you know that? And I said, because my husband used to load bombs on planes in the, in the Air Force for 10 years, and he's showing me you had the same job. And he's like, yes, I was loading bombs on planes. I said, you weren't supposed to have to take lives. He goes, no, I wasn't even armed. He goes, all I had was a pocket knife. His wife's mouth was dropped. His kid's mouth were dropped. Everybody's looking at him because nobody had heard this story. And he was like, 
crying his eyes out. And I said, now, now that I have your attention, I can tell you that those two men that you took the life of have lovingly, lovingly watched over your family from the moment that you took their life. They have been a part of your team since long before you ever came here. You wrote to meet on the battlefield together. They wrote for you to take their life. They wrote to be heroes for their country. And in order to do that, you had to be the one that took their life. And to see his wheels turn in that moment, and he looked at me and he said, I've been in PTSD meetings since I left Vietnam. He said, I won't need it after today. I mean, to put that in perspective, so you guys, and, and when he gets to heaven someday, they'll high five him and go, you know, the one might go, man, you sent me a little extra. I thought we only talked about it once, but you did it twice. Like, what the hell? You know, the camaraderie in heaven and the, the, the story in heaven is so much different than the human thought of these moments. Those men had to go to war and hate their enemy in order to do what they did. But the reality is those moments were made of love. And I like to tell that story to put things in perspective because it's really hard to wrap our heads around me saying these soul contracts are written in heaven, including the difficult ones like murder. Oh my gosh, Vera, you know, I, I don't get emotional very often in these meetings, but that was absolutely beautiful. And I know that it probably is so healing for so many people on this meeting. Thank you. For Thank you for telling yeah, us. So they definitely don't need you to hold a grudge for them. If I say, and if I say anything to people, sometimes like if there's cartel involved, you guys, when I see a cartel type murder and that type of thing, usually I'm telling the family, stay safe, like stay safe, stop pursuing it. You know what I mean? They're okay with it. Like you're just almost in jeopardy doing that sometimes too. So yeah, stay safe. Your loved ones are perfect. I promise. Um, yeah. Beautiful. So Along the same lines, we have a lot of children who have passed by fentanyl overdose and mm -hmm. accidental overdoses. Um, uh, we have one mom who's saying that all of the readings have said that he is so sorry. Do they feel, feel sorrow? Nope. That is an incorrect statement. I will take that and throw it right out the window. Your children do not feel sorry for the moments that they made mistakes because those mistakes were not mistakes at all. They were growth. Your children were growing in those moments and they were also growing you and your family. So you guys, I have two sisters who are drug addicts. One is a meth addict and one's been a heroin addict. Most of their lives, they've been addicts and they've grown us as a family in ways that we never would have grown without their addiction. Not only that, you know, you get protective as a family member, like, well, ah, they maybe don't know where I live because I don't want my crap stolen. You know, that type of thing. I get it, you guys. It's a very human experience. The reality of it is they're always welcome on my positive path. Um, I'm not going to travel their negative or cater to it either, you know, so yeah, just know that um, in those moments of addiction, gosh, that is not an easy blueprint to write. You guys, they wrote those moments into their blueprint. I'm going to be an addict. I'm going to challenge all of you. Sweet. Somebody again, walking behind them in heaven. That one's a bitch. I've done that one. Don't do it. Ah, oh, shut up. It's my blueprint. If I think I want to have fun with this, I'm, I'm doing this, right? And again, game on. Here we are. It sucks on the human level spiritually growth it's growth there's no regret they're not sorry I promise um <laughs> yeah that's amazing Vera. um I I have someone asking Anna's asking is it hard for them to give us messages someone says says it takes so much of their energy does that is that the truth or um no incorrect they have an eternal um, amount of energy uh, at their at their beckoning call because um, and again I don't want to challenge you, any of your faith or beliefs but each of us is made of God um, it doesn't get more energetic than that guys we're each a piece of God and so um, it, you you definitely can't tire God out so there's that and so you're definitely your children are not going to tire out either and if you don't believe in God just I mean the amount of energy that they're made of let's just put it that way is is more immense than you could ever imagine and no you're not going to wear them out it's 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 okay. <laughs> So Linda's asking, can and how can my child be with me always and also with her father? Is that is that a possibility? Oh yeah, definitely. They can be in more, more than one place at a time. And you guys, like sometimes my readings are beautiful proof of that. I literally did a reading today and I was connecting for a man, which means that the people that he was connecting for were with me, connecting with me, right? And all of a sudden I'm seeing yellow birds in my vision, in, in my thoughts, in my vision. And he goes, I'm staring out a window right now and there's yellow birds outside. How amazing is that? This man, at the moment that I'm saying it, is seeing yellow birds as I'm seeing them in my vision. 
connecting with me for him, showing me what is in his vision at that same time. Does that make sense? So for me, they're boundless, you guys. There is no, there's no car for them anymore. They're not stuck in this old clunker anymore. Um, they're free. So they're boundless. They can always be with you. That's beautiful. Um, Sarah is saying, I so believe this. My ch child told me she didn't plan to grow up. So a lot of us, I would say that um, probably 50% of the people that I've talked to in this group have told me that their yes. child, um, probably a month or less than that before they transitioned, told us, which is what yes. happened. Oregon that they were going to transition so is this something that you see often as well and do they absolutely do so here's the thing our soul absolutely has a full knowledge of our blueprint so when somebody's saying I'm in the right place am I in the right place at the right time the answer to that is yes but the but our human mind is erased of our blueprint knowledge right we're not supposed to know where we're going you know we're not supposed to know what we're doing that makes it harder that's what we're here for the harder right but sometimes we have a blip that we, you know, like we feel a certain way because we're still very connected to that soul print. You will find that most of your children did something leading up to that passing that you look back on and go, oh my gosh, it's like they knew. My granny, for instance, I always use her an example. My granny, um, she had a hernia that she didn't take care of and she was taking care of this elderly blind and deaf lady for years, like literally would not leave this lady's side. She, this was a lady from her church and she wanted to take care of her. And the moment that that lady passed, my granny decided to schedule her hernia surgery. But before she did her surgery, she made one trip to every state that her children live in. And she visited every single one of her children and took pictures with them along that trek. And when she came back, she got her simple hernia surgery and she got septic and she passed. If you look back on Granny's journey, she literally made sure that she went to go see each of her children before she graduated. So, I mean, sometimes we look and see the things that they do. Like when Kenny, our buddy who passed in the motorcycle accident, he was introducing me to his dog, Poop, and all of Poop's quirks, his, his dog is a pit bull named Poop. And, and um, I knew all of Poop's up, downs, ins, and outs. He made me best friends with Poop. Well, I inherited Poop. Oh. And if, and if he hadn't shown me all of those things about poop, I wouldn't have had knowledge of his red nose pit bull who was very opinionated and <laughs> super awesome. Um, so, you know, we are preparing sometimes, but not in full human knowledge, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's amazing. And by the yeah. way, we have gone over time just because so many people are asking questions. So I feel really, really grateful that we were able to get all of the answers that we have. And I Wondering if you could maybe just give a short um, uh, summary or, or give us some information to be able to move forward with um, right before we have to sign off. But um, you're just so amazing, Sarah. Yeah, thank you so much. But I would say, you guys, don't give up. Don't give up on yourselves. Take your self doubt, put it in your hands, put all of it in your hands as much as you can. Take all the self doubt from your space and throw it out the window. Removing self-doubt is going to be your best first step to connecting with your children and feeling your children. Self-doubt is such a very human thing. And we're more psychic for others than we are for ourselves sometimes. Challenge your children to tell you something about somebody's day. If they show you tacos and you see something, did you just have tacos today? Throw it to them as a question. Or if you play the t-shirt game with them. Like I said, you know, you know, challenge your children to work with you. They will, they're emphatically there. Um, and if it doesn't happen right away, it's okay. Remember that grief is there and that grief is heavy and, and it can be blocking and, and it's okay because it's made of love. So it's all right as well. We'll just go ahead and hold on to that because we love them so much that, um, yeah, just can't get over it. Can't get through it. I like it. You guys are doing amazing. Keep going. Thank you. And we can't wait to see you at the conference. And I, we always ask everyone to say thank you and goodbye at the end of the meetings. And uh -huh. we, we appreciate you so much. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you. 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 so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.